In this new year, we are exploring how we can see God more clearly in our lives. So far, we have seen the unexpected in the story of the Magi. And we have seen the gift of community through Jesus' baptism and the baptismal vows that we as a congregation make when someone comes to experience the waters of God's grace. Today, we are going to see the importance of curiosity. Now, anyone who has been around kids for very long has heard the question, why? Why is the sky blue? Why do I need to clean up my Legos? Why can't I eat cookies for breakfast? While the why questions can get a little old, a little overwhelming even sometimes, asking these questions helps kids learn about the world. With these questions, children are exploring how things work and go together. Curiosity really is a wonderful thing. We see curiosity in our scripture today. The disciples are curious. They ask questions of Jesus. Jesus also asks a question of the disciples, and we too are called to ask questions in our faith. Because when we stop, we become stagnant. We are no longer discovering the wonders of God. And so let's think about curiosity through our passage this morning. The passage begins with John talking about who Jesus is. In this gospel, we've already heard that Jesus is the light of the world, and here he is declared as the Lamb of God and the Son of God. In this section, John repeats the phrase, I did not know him, yet John trusted and followed God's plan. We read that John was walking with two people and he pointed to Jesus, once again proclaiming Jesus as the Lamb of God. This must have sparked an interest in the two people with them. They became curious. And so they followed Jesus. And here we find Jesus' first words in the Gospel of John. Jesus asks them a question. What are you looking for? I find it interesting that Jesus' first words in John are a question. We might expect a proclamation, a parable, or a life lesson. These are the things we think of Jesus saying. These are the words we might expect from the Son of God. But Jesus asks the question, what are you looking for? Now we could take this as it is. Jesus simply needs to know what these two people are looking for. But if you've studied the Gospel of John, you know that there are always these layers upon layers of meaning in his words. Perhaps Jesus meant, what are you seeking? What do you need? What do you hope for? These are important questions, not only for the people who interacted with Jesus 2,000 years ago, but they are questions that we should be asking in our walk of faith. When you come to church, when you read scripture, when you go about your daily life, what are you looking for? Asking these questions, being curious and truthful to ourselves about our intentions on our faith journey is important. Are we studying the Bible to confirm our beliefs on a subject, or are we reading to see what God truly has to say to us? Are we coming to church because it's just what you do on a Sunday morning? Or are we coming to open ourselves to let the Spirit move in our lives? What are you looking for? Of course, we could also just be like the two people conversing with Jesus that day and simply avoid the question. 
they responded with their own question. Well, where are you staying? This is the sort of question we might ask a friend who is visiting for a while or a person who's traveling to a a place that we have visited previously. And it seems like a strange question for them to ask. Now remember those layers of meaning in the Gospel of John? Scholar Audrey West reminds us that the Greek verb is meno. And she goes on saying that this word for staying, where are you staying, can also mean abide, remain, endure, continue, or dwell. These two people may not have been asking Jesus where he was literally staying that night. I don't know that they were asking for his address. John had told them that this was the Lamb of God. And so instead, perhaps they were asking him, where can we find you? Where is the presence of God? Where do you abide? These two people were curious. And Jesus invited them to come and see. As I thought about Jesus' words this week, I wondered about Jesus inviting their curiosity. Come and see. I can imagine him thinking, yes, keep looking, keep asking. Keep your curiosity and discover the unending revelations of our faith. Now, thankfully, Jesus didn't expect the disciples to always get things right. And he doesn't expect us to have all of the answers. We don't have to be 100% correct all of the time because none of us has a complete comprehension of God. There will always be mystery and wonder as a part of our faith. What is important is that we continue to ask questions to move us forward on our journey of faith. Now, we are still in the season of epiphany in the church calendar. Perhaps we are to see the revelation, the epiphany of the disciples through their curiosity. Because their world changed after they asked their question to Jesus. After they wondered where he was staying, Jesus invited them to change their path, to become disciples, to join him, to come and see. Scholar Debbie Thomas writes, This is the heart of discipleship, not to hasten the end of our search, but to pursue it ever more deeply and intentionally to cultivate a willingness to look. This continual searching, this importance of curiosity is how we grow in our faith and our relationship with God. Now, I'll be honest, we don't always like the answers to our questions. Perhaps we are being asked to do something out of the norm. Perhaps we are being asked to see a new perspective Sometimes exploring our faith can get a little uncomfortable. But it is only through this searching that we can grow and develop our faith. One of the things that I love about our denomination is how we approach deepening our faith. It is known as the Wesleyan Quadrilateral. It's a method of theological reflection proposed by John Wesley and developed by Albert Outler. And it suggests that there are four sources as we consider our faith, as we ask those questions, as we explore with curiosity. The first and primary source is scripture. The entirety of the Bible helps us to know about God and to understand our role in the world. It is where we find the basic tenets of our faith, and it is accessible to everyone. Our understanding of Scripture is then influenced by three other sources, tradition, experience, and reason. 
through tradition, we can learn from the lives of Christians in the past and other locations around the world, connecting us as a community of saints. We can discover how others read and interpret scripture and use it to further our own understanding. We can explore culture and context. Tradition can also help move us past studying and into action. Our own experiences and the experiences of others aid in understanding scripture. We can and should learn from others' experiences so we can either imitate the positive or avoid the mistakes. We can also learn from our own experiences. What we encounter in our lives shapes the way that we read and interpret scripture. The fourth source is reason. In Mark 12, Jesus says, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. Reason doesn't go against faith, but it works with it. Without reason, the parables of Jesus would simply be tales, not stories with a deeper meaning. Reason allows us to ask questions and to seek answers. Jesus invited the curiosity of the disciples. He didn't simply answer their question at a surface level. He offered for them to dive deeper and explore their questions. And Jesus invites our curiosity as well. We aren't supposed to shy away from the difficult questions that life and faith bring us. We are to sit with them to ask questions, to read scripture, to interpret through tradition, experience, and reason. We are to see the importance of curiosity. When we ask questions, it may take us down paths that are sometimes uncomfortable. But by exploring our faith, our vision of God keeps getting clearer and clearer. What are you looking for? What are you seeking in your faith? Jesus invites our curiosity just as he offered deeper exploration of faith for the disciples. Come and see. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.